Hi, I'm Dr. Felice Gersh, and this particular Instagram Live is going to cover breast density in women and its relationship to the issue of breast cancer and breast cancer risk. There was a recent story, an article that came out that talked about breast density, and this has been actually coming up in a number of articles. And this particular one was talking about women's impressions of what breast density mean, and the general review showed that most women have no clue what breast density means. So I thought that was a clue that I should give you the real lowdown on breast density. In case you don't know, it is a general view in the medical community that breast density is a risk factor for breast cancer development. So when a mammogram is performed, they evaluate every single time breast density. And if you have high breast density, that is pretty much considered a significant risk factor for breast cancer. Now, it just turns out, by the way, that about 40% of women undergoing a mammogram will be reported as having significantly high breast density. So what does that really mean? And is this really a risk factor? And for whom? It turns out that breasts are made up of a couple of different types of tissues. There is actually quite a bit of fat and some have more fat than others. There are ductal cells. Those are very important if you're breastfeeding. And then there are lobular cells. Those are also very important if you're breastfeeding because that's where the milk is made. And then it goes out in the ducts and delivered to the nipple so a baby can get food. So that's actually, of course, what the purpose of having breasts are. It's to make milk for infants so that they can live and thrive and grow into nice, healthy humans. The very important life hormone, estrogen, that ovaries make is called estradiol. Just as a little background, estrogen is not a hormone. It's a family of hormones. And the estrogen made by the ovaries during the reproductive life is called estradiol. It has a symbol. E2, estrogen E, and the number two. So it turns out that estradiol is going to have an effect on every single tissue in the body because estradiol is the hormone of life. It not only causes menstrual cycles, it also coordinates all the organs to work in synchrony, giving them health and vitality to have a healthy woman who can be fertile have babies and raise them and do it again a few times. That is, whether you like it or not, the reality, the prime directive of life is making babies. The purpose of breasts is to feed them. Now, fortunately for us as humans, we can have some degree of self-determination, but that's not relevant to how the human body was evolved. So getting back to breast tissue and density. Well, turns out that as I mentioned, the tissues in the breast are all going to respond to the presence of estradiol. And when you have significant amounts of estradiol produced by the ovaries, as happens in every healthy reproductive age woman from her ovaries, the breasts will look dense. And what that means is that there's a proliferation, a lot of ductal breast cells. That is what the breast is supposed to have a lot of when you're in the reproductive age range. Estradiol will cause ductal cell proliferation, which is normal. If you didn't have those ducts, the breasts couldn't do their job. Now, what happens when you do a mammogram on a young woman? It looks like what we call whiteout. They're so full of these you know, ductal tissue that it obscures any kind of vision. It looks like just white, like to- total snow. So you can't see any detail. You just can't see anything because the ductal cells are taking up all the space and they're so crowded that it just looks like white out. Now, that's normal. That's what breasts look like if you do a mammogram on a young reproductive age woman. But what happens after menopause? Well, here's the fact the breast ductal cells shrivel. In an absence of estrogen in a healthy, normal woman who is in menopause and no longer has ovarian production of estradiol, unfortunately, that's how I look at it, everything in the female body kind of dries up and shrivels up because estradiol gives life to all these tissues. That includes the ductal cells in the breast. They literally like shrivel up, like dehydrate and get really scrawny. 
And what replaces them? Fat. There's quite a lot of fat. I mentioned that before. So after menopause, the breasts are predominantly fat. The lobular cells also, by the way, shrivel up too. But the breasts are made of fat and the fat does not shrivel up. We have plenty of fat. That is just actually a problem for women at many stages of life and particularly after menopause. The skill set to make fat is quite different than the skill set to make and support ductal cells and lobular cells. So if you do a mammogram on an older woman who is not on, this is very important to know, not on estrogen therapy in menopause, the breasts will not be dense because the ductal cells, which give the appearance of density on a mammogram, have shriveled up. So what you mostly see is fat, and fat will look dark. And against the background of dark, if you have a cancer which develops the most, most commonly in the ductal cells, you can get breast cancer in the lobular cells, but we're not going to discuss that right now. But if you get ductal carcinoma, that will show up on a mammogram much better if you have predominantly fat and then you have an abnormality on those kind of shriveled up ductal cell tissues. So that's what happens in women who have a normal mammogram and they're not on hormones. Well, what if a woman is like me and many others, like most of my patients after menopause, they say, I know it's not natural to have hormones after menopause, but I want to be optimally healthy. And to be optimally healthy as a female, you need these hormones. Nature took them away. That doesn't mean it's beneficial, even though it's natural. So you go on human bioidentical hormones, which includes estradiol, the same hormones that the ovaries made all through those reproductive years. Well, guess what? They're going to do what they do. The ductal cells are going to respond to the estradiol and proliferate. This is not uncontrolled growth. This is not cancer. This is just ductal cells not shriveling up and staying viable and healthy. This is not cancer. This is not a precursor to cancer. This is not a risk for cancer. This is like keeping the breast rejuvenated and not just the breast, but every organ system in the body is not going to shrivel up and kind of dehydrate in an absence of this vital life hormone estradiol. So if you're on estrogen in the form of estradiol, I hope that's the only kind you should get in menopause, the breasts will look dense. So that is not a risk factor. Now, if you have dense breasts, just like in a young woman, you can't see much because it's like white out. So you're going to not see if you get a breast cancer as easily. But that's the way it goes. And if a young woman has a breast cancer, it's hard to see it too. But here's the good news. You're going to keep inflammation down because what is behind breast density in a postmenopausal woman who is not on estrogen replacement therapy in the form of human bioidentical estradiol? Well, her breasts should become predominantly fat and the ductal cells should shrivel up. So the breasts no longer are dense because of the shriveled up ductal cells and predominant fat. But if a woman, and this is very common, after menopause has a body-wide state of inflammation, sometimes known as inflammaging, inflammation associated with aging, then guess what? She's gonna have inflammation everywhere, in her brain, in her arteries, in her bones, and in her breasts as well. Now, if you have inflammation, this is really important, it upregulates an enzyme called aromatase that's present in fat tissue, whether the fat tissue is in your belly or in your breasts. And what does this enzyme do? It converts androgens, which are predominantly coming from the adrenal gland. That's where most of the androgens come from. These are like male hormones, but they're not really male hormones because they're supposed to be in women, but they're like the precursor to testosterone. And they convert into estrogens. All estrogens come from androgens, and many androgens come from the adrenal gland. Now, 
in fat tissue that is inflamed, the dominant estrogen that's made in menopausal women is called estrone. Remember I said estrogen is a family of hormones. Estrone, known as E1, is different from the estrogen I would give to women in menopause or what's made from the ovaries, which is E2, estradiol. And it has a different effect on what? On receptors. Estrogen has more than one receptor, and the receptor that develops in breast cancer that's positive for estrogen is E1's type, which is alpha. So it turns out that if you have inflammation everywhere after menopause, and why do you get inflammation? Just in a quick nutshell, it's because if you don't have estradiol, the immune system becomes dysregulated. You go into a pro-inflammatory state, you get leaky gut, and your immune cells have a lower threshold to creating inflammatory cytokines. So this is a very big deal. After menopause, without proper estrogen, women tend to become pro-inflammatory, and that's everywhere. So pro-inflammatory fat is going to upregulate this enzyme and cause the conversion of androgens, mostly from the adrenal gland, to be produced and converted into estrone. And when you have inflammation, you create DNA instability, and when you don't have the right estrogen, estradiol, you don't properly trigger what's called programmed cell suicide or apoptosis. So crazy, yucky, old cells, we call them senescent cells that create more inflammation and have what's called misfolded proteins that are pro-cancer. The body doesn't get rid of those cells properly when you don't have estradiol. So you have a proliferation of these old, yucky, like precancer, senescent, inflammatory cells in the breast that don't destroy themselves, don't have programmed cell suicide, and that increase their risk of cancer. A pro-inflammatory environment anywhere, and especially in the breast, is a stimulus to the development of cancer, breast cancer. And this has been proven. There are articles published showing an environment in the breast that is more inflammatory predisposes to breast cancer. Now you have the perfect storm. You have proliferation. Remember, estrogen causes growth of the ductal cells. But when you have estradiol combined with progesterone, it's controlled growth. It's appropriate. It's like restoration. It's nurturing. It's health. Okay, you can't have health if everything is shriveling and old and yucky. That's what happens when you don't have estradiol. But when you have estrone and you have all this inflammation, then it's a totally different situation. What happens is you have these old yucky cells that can turn into cancer cells. And you have estrone, which is like a growth factor without any control. The bad yucky cells don't commit suicide and kill themselves off and the estrone becomes fuel to the fire. It doesn't cause the breast cancer, but it can stimulate their growth. And it stimulates the growth of ductal cells. So if a postmenopausal woman has dense breasts on a mammogram and she is not on proper hormone replacement therapy with estradiol and progesterone, the human identical hormones, then if she has dense breasts on a mammogram, yes, that is a sign of inflammation and uncontrolled growth of her ductal cells in her breasts. And that is a risk factor for breast cancer and also a risk factor for everything bad because you have total body inflammation which underlies all the diseases of aging. You name it, it's related to uncontrolled inflammation. So yes, a mammogram that shows dense breasts in an older woman, postmenopausal, not on proper hormone replacement therapy, and she has dense breasts, that is a red flag risk for breast cancer. But now you know what it means. Ductal proliferation, uncontrolled inflammation, the ticket to cells turning into cancer and being promoted to grow like fuel on the fire. The estrone promotes the growth of the cancer, 
It did not cause it. It promotes its growth and it grows the ductal cells, which will pre-cancer, you know, and when you don't have cancer yet, hopefully you'll never, that is a risk factor because it tells you about the environment that's unhealthy and inflammatory environment that's causing the production locally in the breast tissue of estrone. So if you have dense breasts, but you're young, you're still having hormones, you're like in your 40s and you're still having regular menstrual cycles, or you're postmenopausal and you're on proper hormone therapy, you're going to have dense breasts because that's what estrogen does, a healthy estrogen in an uninflamed woman. When you give hormones properly after menopause, when you have hormones properly made in your body, it controls inflammation. You don't get into this situation. So interpretation of breast density is critical to understand its meaning, its implication, and its prognostic value. So I hope this was very helpful for you to understand breast density, mammography, and the role of estrogen. Thank you.